now we can go for a far a demo sessions of far how we are going te to teach in our classroom that we are going to explain you in that sessions Now, let's go with the far. So they have prepared very detailed video over here, but let's go through one of the most important topic of FA. Uh, I'll explain you how I'm teaching over here, how we are going through with the courses. Just one second. Hello and welcome to Surgeon CPA Review. Liz Kohler here. In our FAR lecture today, we are going over investment in equity securities. Now, in a previous class, I went over this diagram, but I'd like to review it again. Uh, the accounting treatment for an investment in an equity security depends upon the percentage of the investee stock that is held by the investor. If an investor owns less than 20%, they're considered to have passive interest, and we would use the fair value method. If an investor owns between 20 and 50 percent, they are considered to have a significant influence, and we use the equity method. And over 50 percent, they have a controlling interest, and consolidation would be required. So we've gone over the equity method in a separate lecture. We've gone over consolidations in a separate le lecture. Today we're t focusing on the fair value method of accounting for equity uh, investments. So. The rules have changed, and it's important that you know now that equity investments in unconsolidated entities with readily determinable fair values are to be measured only through one method, and that is fair value through net income. There used to be categories of trading available for sale, debts, and held to maturity that no longer exists for equity investments. Now, if the security does not have a readily determinable fair value, they can be measured at fair value through net income or an alternate, uh, alternative method, uh, and we'll go into what the alternative method does involve. The alternative method uh, includes investment being measured at cost less impairment, plus or minus any changes in observable price changes in, an or in orderly transactions for identical or similar investments of the same issuer. A separate election has to be made to use the alternative method, and it must be made for each eligible investment and must be consistently used. Changes in measurement are recognized in net income. Investments, all equity investments for which the entity has elected to apply the alternative method are subject to a one-step qualitative impairment assessment. This is, they've made it easier for us here, so let's take a look. For each reporting period, the impairment loss would be measured as the difference between the fair value and the carrying amount of that investment. The impairment loss would be reported in net income. Let's do an example of this fair value method. Assume that Beta Company began operations in January 1, year 0, during year, sorry, year 1. During year 1, Beta purchased various equity securities. The cost and fair value of these securities at the end of year 1 were as follows. So you can see red, blue, white, and pink. 100 shares each. We've got cost totaling 7,500, fair value of 760. When you go security by security, you can see there were some gains and some losses. But the net change down at the bottom shows a loss of 550 and an overall gain of 700. So when they initially record the purchase of the securities, they would debit investment in equity securities and credit cash for the 7,500 for the cost basis. But you can see the fair value in total is $76.50. So at the end of the year, they make a fair value adjustment. 
Now, in this case, it's a gain, a net gain. When you compare the net the loss against the gain, it's a $150 gain. So we would debit the fair value adjustment, increasing the value of the investment account, and credit the net unrealized holding gain, which is reported in earnings. It goes to net income. Depending on the classification in, prior, in the prior pronouncement, it, used, it could have gone to other comprehensive income. And that's still a case for available for sale securities reported under the, um, for debt securities. So let's continue on with this example. Assume that Beta incurred the following transactions during year two. They received dividends of a dollar per share on the red stock, 100 shares. They sold the white stock for $1,000, and they sold the pink stock for $1,500. Now, both of those have a cost of $1,250. And then they purchased 100 shares of green stock for $10 a share. So the entries for each of these transactions would be as follows. To record the dividends, they debit cash and credit dividend and revenue. To record the sale of the white stock that cost twelve a thousand dollars, and they sold it for twelve fifty, they have a realized gain of two hundred fifty. So they debit cash for twelve fifty, credit the white stock equity securities for one thousand, and credit the realized gain for two fifty. For the sale of the pink stock, they sold it at a loss. Um, <clears throat> They sold it uh, with a cost basis of fifteen hundred. The cash was twelve fifty, and the loss was two fifty. And then they purchased additional securities for for green. Uh, the securities had a cost basis of a thousand, so we debit equity securities for green and credit cash for a thousand. All right. So you can see when they sell the stock, they either have a realized gain or a realized loss. And when they make a fair value adjustment at the end of the year, they adjust the fair value adjustment account accordingly. And if there is a, an unrealized holding gain, it's credited, and that would be reported in, in earnings. If there is an unrealized holding loss, it would be debited, and the fair value adjustment account would be credited. All right, so let's continue on with this example. Assume that the cost and fair value of Beta's investments in equity securities at December 31st, year two, are as follows. So there's a cost of 6000 and a fair value of 5750 So here we can see there's a net loss of 250 but if you recall, the fair value adjustment account had a debit in it of 150 for the gain. So what we need is the adjustment account to reflect a net debit, I'm sorry, a net credit of 250. In order to do that, we have to credit it by $400. So we would have a net unrealized holding loss of 400,000 and a fair value adjustment of 400,000. So keep in mind that fair value adjustment is a balance sheet account. It's a account, so you have to consider the balance in it. This, uh, the $250, $250 loss was the amount of loss they needed to have in the account. And since they had a previous credit of $150, they needed to credit the account for $400. All right, so let's talk presentation and disclosure of this area. There's a lot of information here because it's, it's a big change in the pronouncements. So the entities have to report disaggregated information about the financial assets and liabilities. They have to report their measurement categories, fair value through net income or fair value through OCI, amortized costs, and any form of financial assets that it holds, securities, loans, receivables. They also must disaggregate any recognized net gains and losses into realized and unrealized gains and losses. Public entities must base their fair value measurements on the exit price notion, not the entry price. And public companies no longer need to disclose the methods and significant assumptions used to estimate the fair value of the financial instruments <clears throat> measured at amortized cost on the balance sheet. Non-public entities no, no longer need to disclose the fair value of financial instruments measured at amortized cost. So they lightened up on the requirements here for public and non-public companies. If the alternative method is used, entities are required to disclose the carrying amounts of the investments without readily determinable fair values, mm -hmm. annual and cumulative adjustments to the carrying amount and impairment, upward and downward adjustments, and any other qualitative information that they used in determining the carrying amounts and adjustments resulting from obs observable price changes. In terms of the accumulated other comprehensive income, in the year of adoption, uh, unrealized gains and losses on available for sale equity securities are reclassified from accumulated OCI to the beginning retained earnings. 
As a result, these amounts will never be realized in net income. So in the year of adoption of this new standard, that is the way they have to, to account for it. So just a couple of theory questions here. Which of the following is correct regarding the recognition principle and class, classification criteria in ASU 2016-01, which is financial instruments? The update changed the accounting requirements for measuring impairment of all financial assets. No, it did not. The equity investments accounted for under the equity method are out of the scope of the accounting guidance. That's true. All changes in fair value of financial liabilities that use the fair value option are recorded through the income statement. No. Changes in fair value that result from changes in instrument-specific credit risk are recorded through additional paying capital. That's not true either. The only answer that works here is the equity method investments are out of the scope of this guidance. This guidance, I. I deals with just the investment in equity securities where the investor has passive interest, so not, sig not significant influence and it's not uh, controlling interest. All right, number two, in accordance with this new pronouncement, entities no longer have to disclose financial assets by form. That's not true. Entities would measure equity securities with readily determinable fair values at their fair value. That is true. Entities no longer have to group or disclose financial liabilities by measurement category. No, they have to. And disclosure about bifurcated embedded, embedded derivatives would be optional. Well, we covered der derivatives in another class, but that is not the case. The best answer here is choice B. They have to measure their equity securities at fair value. Remember that trading available for sale held to maturity for equity securities no longer applies. All investments are either accounted for through fair value or the, or the alternative method. Okay? Well, that concludes our class today. Thank you for joining me. Good luck studying, and we will see you next time. So now, friends, you have studied over here equity security definitions. So what is the definition? Definition is given in the accounting standard update. ASU is named as accounting standard update. This is the year where it is published, that is 2016. And it was the first updations of that particular time, which defines the equity security as an ownership interest in the entity. Why it is an ownership interest? Equity holder are considered as an owner of entity, right? So when you hold any security or any shares of a reliance industry, you are ideologically considered as an owner of a reliance shares. Correct? So the equity is always associated with the ownership interest in the entity. Now, example is common as preferred or other capital stock. Or the right to acquire. It can be an interest in the entity or right to acquire. Right as a warrant rights, forward purchase right contract rights or call purchases or it can be also considered as a dispose of as an ownership interest in an entity for a fixed determinable price now as an equity holder you have some other rights to acquire some shares because you are an owner you have a first right to have a warrant to write to forward purchase contract or a call options you have a right to dispose your security at a given point of time to earn a profit or to at a fixed deposit, fixed prices. Now, your cost is also cover purchase price plus broker. This is really very important line, friends. Cost of equity is not only covered with the purchase price, but it consider plus brokerage commissions. So this is really very important factor. Like when they will ask you the questions, right? What is the cost of issuing equity security? You have to mention purchase price plus brokerage commissions. Clear? Now, let's go for another topic. Investment in the equity security. There are three types of equity security investment. First is 20%, less than 20%. Second one is more than 50%. And third one is 20 to 50%. Why I consider first over here, second over here, and third over here? Let me explain you that as well. Now, if you are holding less than 20% shares of any particular company, your, what is your intentions for holding that thing? Your intention is to just earn profit because you are not 
your intention is not to gain a significant influence or to control an entity you just want to you're just waiting for a price hike if price hikes and you just sell it to the market and gain a profit that's why you are considered as a passive investors and your share price a share should be valued at a fair value into them as per in the financials of yours now if you are holding any entity's shares for more than 50 percent in this case your intention is very clear you don't want to just invest your intention is to control that entity so over here your intention is very clear you are want to control an entity and that's why at the balance sheet date you have to do consolidations understand my word very clearly when you are going to do consolidation at the balance sheet date only so when you are doing a balance sheet when you are preparing your balance sheet that is a december 31st you are going to consolidate your balance sheet so consolidation is done only at a balance sheet date and the third one that is the most important one that is significant influence that means you are not holding less than 20 or more than 50 you are holding in between like 20 to 15 percent any between that particular area is considered as you want to in, make a significant influence in the, all the decisions made and taken by your subsidiary company in this you are a significant influencer because you hold majority of the shares then in that case you are supposed to use equity method now friend i told you just a few seconds ago that consolidation is done on the balance sheet date so what methods we are using during the year we are doing consolidation method only on december 31st but during the first of january to december 30th what method we are going to use we are going to use only equity method clear understood now that's why i told equity method is one of the most important method for cpa examination there are plenty of general entries that is going to be learned through this particular method and this will help you not only into the far but it will help you in the your audit section as well as in the bc areas as well now equity investments equity investment in unconsolidated entity with readily determinable fair value are to be measured at fair value through net income it is measured through which method fair value through net income so whatever changes in the fair value we have to adjust it through the net income correct so all unrealized gain what is the meaning of unrealized you have not realized yet okay so it means like if you purchase any shares at hundred dollar and on december 31st this share value it reaches 225 dollar so difference between these two is 25 dollar is nothing but your unrealized gain it will reflect in your pnl why because it is unrealized gain and there is a change in the pnl item correct now this is the one thing if you sell this shares like on june 30th on june 30th you want to sell this share at 150 dollar then your realized gain would be a 25 dollar it is considered as a realized gain why because you sold shares and realized your gain in cash that's why it is considered as a realized gain when you are not selling it it is considered as an unrealized gain when you are selling it it is considered as a realized gain clear now what is alternative matter investment are measured at cost less impairment plus or minus any observable price change in orderly transition for the identical or similar investment for the same issues a separate relation to use alternative method is made for each eligible investment and it must be consistently used now sometimes it will happen that you don't have a readily available fair value what you will do in that case you you don't have a specific market for that for example you are a 
in the petrochemicals, right? Reliance is also in the petrochemicals. Your company is very small. Reliance is very big and established company. So you cannot consider your share price as a Reliance share price, correct? Because you company is having different net worth, your difference, you are dealing with different business altogether with the Reliance. So you cannot consider your share price is equal to Reliance share price. So in this case, you have to do some adjustments with respect to various factors such as impairment, observable price changes of orderly transactions, and it is considered as if you have to use a market of identical or a similar investment. So it will fall under the identical or similar investment, and then you can decide your price. If reliance price increase, your price is definitely going to increase because you both are working in the same industry, but proportionate, there will be a difference. There will be some other factors as well to increase the price. You need to understand that thing. Like if there's something good has happened with the reliance, if reliance got some good contracts, then their price will shoot like anything. But it doesn't mean that your price will shoot anything. Yes, if oil and other products prices of international market is increasing, if that demand is increasing, your and reliance price both will increase. So you need to understand the factor for which you want to change your prices. So it is not, it is considered as an identical or similar investment price change effects. So separate election is used to alternative method is made eligible investment and must be consistently used. So now, they are saying that you can use the alternative matter. There is no issue with it because you don't have readily available fair value at the market. But in that case, what you are supposed to do, you have to use this matter consistently. You cannot change year by year. Like first year you choose some matter, second year you choose different matter. That is not allowed. In US CPA or in, AS, in US GAAP, it is very clear that whatever method you are selecting, you have to follow that method consistently. So when you choose fair value method, you have to follow it consistently. And changes in the measurement are recognized in the net income. We have discussed fair value through net income. So whatever the changes in the prices, it is considered as a change in measurements and it is recognized in the net income. Now, you have to taste for the impairment all equity investment for which equity has elected to apply alternative methods are subject to one step qualitative impairment assessment. So once you go for alternative method, you have to see your impairment assessment as well. At every balance sheet date, you have to think about impairment. Why impairment? Impairment you need because you know the value of the, your investment as you purchase is not the same at the balance sheet date. You have to see whether the price is declining or not. If prices are declining, you have to go for impairment methodology. Each reporting period, impairment loss is measured as the difference between the fair value and the current carrying value of the investment. You have to see what is your current value, carrying value of investment. What is the meaning of carrying value? It is the value which is showing into the balance sheet, right? So that value you have to compare with the fair value and whatever the difference in between that you have to adjust with your impairment loss and impairment loss where you are going to recognize it is again you are supposed to going to recognize at a net income so whatever the changes in the fair value this is nothing but the changes in the fair value we have discussed earlier whatever changes in the fair value we are recognizing through net income clear okay friends now let us go with the example number 2001 assume beta coming begins their operation on January 1, 2001. During 2001, Beta purchased various equity securities. The cost and fair value of this security at the end of 2001 were as follows. So they were mentioned red, blue, white, pink. And what are the shares as well? Also, they were mentioned 100 shares for each. Cost is 2000, 3000, 1000, 1500. And what is the fair value? 2500, 2600, 1200, and 1350. So now you can see that thing. There is a, just compare the difference between the cost and the fair value of each and every security. And you can identify gain and losses. In red stock, you have a gain of $500. Whereas in blue stock, you have a loss of $400. In white company stock, you have a $200 gain. Why? There is fair value is $1,200, whereas cost is $1,000. So difference between these two is recognized as a unrealized gain. Why I'm looking as an unrealized gain? Because I'm not sold it yet. I've not sold it. That's why I'm keeping as an unrealized gain. Now I will go with the pink. Pink has cost value of 1,500. Fair value is 1,350. 
and I'm booking 150 as my losses. Now, I'll book revalued my investment. My cost is how much? 7,500. So at the time of purchasing, I'm booking investment in equity security account debit. Why? Because when I purchase any security, my investment is going to increase. Invest is coming in which side? Asset side. Asset is which side? Debit side. So when investment are increasing, we have to debit the investment. So investment will debit it and the value of that will be 7,500. If we are purchasing security, what we are giving in return? We are giving our cash, our bank amount. So that will be credited because that will be reduced. And that is also in the debit side. That is in also in asset side. So when we are removing assets, we are reducing asset. We have to credit that item. So cash, we are reducing cash. We are crediting that is 7,500. So this is the journal entry for the purchasing of the transactions. Now, what happened the 2000 year end? See the losses and gains. See the difference. The difference between these two is $150. So this is my uh, fair value adjustment. So whatever the fair value adjustment that I am booking as a revenue. So I'm booking as a net unrealized holding gain in my PL item by $150. So what I'm debiting, I'm debiting fair value adjustment. This is in balance sheet item. This is my balance sheet item. And this will be my income statement item. It will go to the income statement and this will go to the balance sheet. Why it is debit side of balance sheet? Because it will increase the valuation of my investment. That's why I'm reflecting as a fair value adjustment as a debit amount. And this is my income. That's why I'm showing it as a credit amount, as a net unrealized holding gate. That is a $150. Now, what happened in year two? Year two, we receive a dividend from rate security. That is $1 per share. So $100 dividend we received. So dividend is my income. So I'm booking my income dividend revenue as $100 and cash as a hundred dollar now when i sold my particular shares at one two five zero i'm selling at one two five zero my cost is how much one thousand dollar so my retail gain is how much two fifty dollar i sold pink company at one two five zero and my cost is how much one five double zero so my cost is how much one thousand five hundred i'm removing my reducing my investment that's why i'm crediting my security security at cost and Whatever I'm realizing cash, I'm, that is I'm debiting because my cash balance will increase when I'm selling my security. Whatever the difference, this will be my balancing figure. That is a $250. Clear? Now when we purchase additional shares of green, that is $100, 100 shares at $10, then $1,000 investment will increase and cash will be reduced. Now I'll see my Cost price is how much? 6,000. My fair value is how much? 5,750. So my unrealized gain is how much? 250. But in previous adjustments, what was my gain? 150. So now I will make only additional, that is 4,000. I am booking 250 as my loss. Previously, I booked 150 as gain. So I need to first reverse my gain, previous book gain. So I'm removing first 150 as a gain and then charging 250 as a loss. So that's why my current year adjustment is $400. Now, what would be my entry? My fair value is reduced. So I have to reduce my investment. So fair value adjustment account credit by 400. And as it is a loss, I need to increase my expense. So my expense will be increased by booking expense. That is a net unrealized holding loss. That is $400. Clear? Now, we need to present and disclose. Presentation and disclosure is a very critical area of any particular financial and reporting subject. So entity must present and disregard information about financial asset and financial liabilities. Measurement categories. We need to measurement in the category. We have to distribute the form of any company, that financial asset that we are holding it. We have to identify realized gain and unrealized losses or unrealized gains as well. When we go for exit price notations, we have to mention that public entities no longer need to disclose the method of that use for estimate fair value. Non-public entities no longer need to disclose the fair value financial measurement at amortized cost. Now, there are some alternative methods for disclosure as well. Entity using alternative method must disclose each interim and annual reporting period. 
the carrying amount of investment without readily determinable fair value annual and cumulative adjustment to the carrying amount that we have to make and then qualitative information used in determining carrying value and the adjustments resulting for the observable price change so whatever the price we are observing when we are making any change that also we have to mention over here previously we were using aoci translations but right now we have changed so this is a, like previously when any security is considered as available for sale when we are adjusting any their unrealized gain and losses we are adjusting through the accumulated oci now we are not adjusting with this and we are adjusting with net income so previously we were adjusting with accumulated other comprehensive income and right now we are adjusting with net income clear with this now friend i hope you guys have enjoyed this session now if you have any questions you can ask me directly over here or you can call me or you can message me as well